So we have Professor Jeff Gallup with us today uh, from the School of Government at the University of Sydney. Thank you very much, Professor Gallup. Thank you very much. Today. Uh, Professor Gallup um, is world-renowned <laughs> in the area of politics. Um, and previously, um, Professor Gallup was, uh, was the Premier of Western Australia. Uh, and well, it's, it's an honour to have you with Thank us you today. Thank you very much. So, so, Professor Gao, today's topic is politics in a project environment. Now, um, there are some students that uh, are doing masters in project management, and they want to know what is the role of politics in, in a project environment, and how they can utilize um, uh, politics to to leverage and, and get the best out of their um, teams and um, and bring the best out of their organization. So, we have a few questions that. Um, we can go through. So the first one is, what is the role of politics in a project environment? Well, I think it's very important to note that uh, there are many different types of projects. And I guess people who are involved in the engineering business might think of a project simply as, as a new bridge or a road or a building. But in fact, there are lots of other sorts of projects as well. There, there's a new piece of legislation that the government might want to take through a parliament. Uh, there's a new policy that might want implemented it. The, the project might be to create a new constitution. And so all projects have something in mind to create. And in the act of creation, there's bound to be a whole range of political issues that are involved. So I think the answer to the question is, uh, project management is not just a technical issue. It's not just, you know, putting together uh, bits and pieces, whether they're mechanical objects or whether they're uh, software or whether they're policy frameworks and then bringing it into being. There's a lot of politics in and around that. In fact, politics is embedded in the whole process itself. Uh, there will be controversy. There might be controversy about the project. It might be a project uh, that has been heavily contested and, and those that are opposed to it will be taking an interest in it as it's been uh, developed. Uh, it might be a project that actually involves people. The project might be to get people more involved in politics. So by its very nature, it's a political project. But if it's a, a, a typical engineering project, there's also going to be lots of politics involved because um, the construction of a bridge, will there'll be stakeholders in the broader community. Uh, there'll be different interests uh, within the organisation itself. There'll be timelines that have to be met. So I think politics is pretty well everywhere. And by politics, I mean, you know, those processes we associate with having influence and having power. Uh, how you get the influence and how you get the power, what you do with the influence you have and what you do with the power that you have, they're all political questions. And uh, any organisation will have those processes going on within them, as will any project itself. Fantastic. Um, so why is it important for project managers to understand uh, the politics of an organisation? Well, if you think about it this way, any organisation is like a mini political system. It has rules. Uh, the rules may be formal. They may be policies that the company has or the organisation has. They may be informal rules that no one talks about, but they're actually there. I mean, who is it in the organisation that carries the wisdom of the past? You know, who is it in the organisation that knows how to uncover you know, problems that uh, people haven't talked about for many years but they remember from the past. Uh, there'll be different interests. There'll be some people in an organisation that want to stress professional development of the workforce. There'll be others in an organisation that want to stress the delivery of the particular um, services that that company has. Uh, there'll be different values. Some people will want to push harder, be more ruthless. Some will want to step back and perhaps take a more conciliatory approach to issues. These are all political issues. So you've got a mini constitution, formal rules and informal rules. You've got different interests. And some people have influence, some don't. Some have power, some don't. Power will be contested. Uh, those with influence will be challenged. That's politics. Mm. So I think any organisation has within its own structure a mini political system and a mini political process. And, and it's interesting because Politics can be such a broad term, and it, sometimes it even has negative impl implications, like uh, or connotations. You know, we say o office politics, or uh, you know, there's too much politics happening, and and, and generally people mm. see it as something negative. Now, why is that, and 
how can we see politics in a positive light? Um, and in fact, what, how can we define politics? Because it, I feel then a lot of people don't really know what politics mm. is. Well, we, let's start with the definition yeah. I gave earlier, which is politics is all about influence and power. Mm. Who has it, how they've got it, what they're doing with it. Mm. Uh, and, and there's no doubt that, that in, in, in the normal language that we use, often we think about politics as government and politicians. Mm. And, and because they're not held in the, the, the le to the level of respect that they once were for a whole range of reasons, some fair and not, some not so fair, mm. politics has, has partly has a bad name because it's associated with politicians working within government mm. Mm. who get into parliament right. and then disappoint people right. or get into government and then do things they say they wouldn't do mm. or whatever. Mm. So that's part of the reason. However, if we take the broader definition of politics, which is the definition that I take, Politics is everywhere. It's in business, it's in NGOs, it's in churches, it's in communities, and it's not just in government. If we take that broader definition, what is it we're talking about? Well, we're talking about people getting power. We're talking about people getting influence. Now, there are various ways you can do that. I mean, you might get power simply by the strength of your argument. You might get power simply because of the, the charisma that you have. On the other hand, you may get power because you're, you're smarter than someone else in the manipulation of the system, uh, which may not be a sustainable form of power, but nevertheless it's power. So I think politics has a destructive side to it and has a constructive side to it. And, and, and a lot of people associate it with the destructive aspect. Manipulation, covering up, uh, spin, we use the word spin, where people describe something in, in a way that isn't really representative of, of its true nature. Mm. Uh, you know, a bad policy they describe as, as a good policy because they don't want to acknowledge the negative impacts it might have. So I think policy, politics has this sort of unfortunate connotation with bad things. One, because people associate it with politicians who break promises. And two, because it's associated with ruthless behaviour that, that goes beyond what we expect of our fellow human beings. Mm. Um, so, how can project managers utilize p political strategies to benefit um, the organization and their team? Well, I think the one important message there is that any project, whether it's in government or the non-government sector or the business sector or the community generally, needs a good governance structure. Mm. And the one thing I think people in business can learn from, you know, formal government type politics is governance. You know, how do you provide a framework around a project uh, that allocates responsibilities, that has lines of communication, uh, that has mechanisms to resolve conflicts mm. over, you know, what priority to set, you know, what, how to meet a particular problem that emerges in the process. So I think politics can help project managers, particularly in this area of governance, mm. that, that, that projects do need a good governance framework. And, and, and often we find when that doesn't exist and something goes wrong, someone says to someone else, well, that was your problem, and they say, no, it wasn't, it was your problem. That situation should never emerge. So politics as governance, as providing a set of rules and a framework within which to solve problems and to deliver projects and particular outcomes, I think that's, that's a very important part of any project. Secondly, I think project managers need to be looking to their stakeholders. I mean, they need to understand what their stakeholders want. They need to understand what interests their stakeholders have in the project. Just as politicians have to be concerned with their voters, project managers have to be concerned with their stakeholders. And again, they can learn from uh, the way in which good politicians operate to keep people on side, to keep the lines of communication up. So I think there's a lot in what we understand by governance that can be applied to what appears to be just a technical project where you collect a various group of resources and you create something different. You need a government's framework around that that takes into account the different interests, the stakeholders, and, and let's face it, that's, that's part of what politics does. Mm -hmm. and, and the area of project governance is a big area. and it's, uh, What are some uh, methods to, uh, to use to actually build a good project governance system and have it in place uh, prior to the project even being 
uh, initiated? Well, I think uh, you know, I think all of the I's have to be dotted and the uh, the T's crossed. I mean, uh, when it comes to the implementation part of government, for example, which is when it comes to the implementation part of a project, yeah, all the different aspects need to be properly considered. Mm. Let's go through some of them. I mean, obviously, the first one would be absolute clarity on what the aim of the exercise mm. is. Mm. I mean, what is the problem? that the exercise is attempting to solve and uh, yeah, that's very important and then secondly that needs to be understood by all that are involved. Secondly as I think I pointed out earlier we need to allocate the responsibilities I mean different people have a different task to perform and if those responsibilities uh, are not allocated to anyone problems are going to emerge there's no doubt that if you if you leave a particular issue and expect that it won't be a problem. It will be a problem. Mm. And so I think you make sure you have responsibilities allocated in all of the relevant areas. I think thirdly and importantly, of course, uh, there's the stakeholder side of the equation, building a road. You know, there are going to be issues. You might build the road next to a community where there are dust issues. You might be going through a sensitive environmental area where, you know, you've been commissioned to look after certain aspects of the environment. So you have to be careful to see that all of that is done. So I think this framework of governance is very important uh, for, for any, any project. And finally and importantly, you have to have a way of building a team. And, and that means the, the personality, the style of management, uh, the way in which people are involved in the project, how achievements are, are respected and acknowledged when people do well, that you've got incentives uh, built into the process. So I think the whole teamwork thing which is essentially what political parties try to do, it's essentially what non-government organisations try to do, uh, it's very important for a project. Morale is high, uh, productivity is going to be high as well. Mm, absolutely. And, and um, just going back to what you mentioned, those steps, um, what I gathered from um, the very first thing you mentioned is the how is the why is very important. Why are we doing this? Yeah, and I think it's uh, it, it's a question not not many people ask. Mm. It's like okay, we got to do this project. Let's do it. So well, let's take a bridge. Mm. Uh, I mean, why are we building the bridge? Uh, if you just say, well, it's a technical question. We're building the bridge. Well, we might be building the bridge because there are two parts to a community that have been separated over all of the years, and what we need to do is, is, is to make sure that they can pass over that bridge. Uh, to, to, to more efficiently than they did before. It might be uh, to overcome a problem in terms of flooding. So the design of the bridge will partly be impacted on by the, by the purpose of the exercise. Uh, you know, we should be interested in outcomes. I mean, we want, we want outputs like a bridge or, or a new policy or a new law, but we want them for a reason. And I think it's, it's knowing what that reason is and communicating them, communicating it to all of the players in the process of, of, of the project is very, very important because it, it, will, it will influence the way they go about their job and hopefully it will mean what comes out at the other end will be what was, was intended. Mm. And do you think we are spending enough time explaining why we're doing what we're doing? Like whether it's the government or whether it's the organisations, large organisations, small businesses, do they have a why? Because um, in terms of leadership, uh, the why it becomes very important. Uh, well, it's important for two reasons. It's important for the reason that I've just given, which is that you, you know you really need to know what, why you're doing something so you can do it quite well. But it's also important that you know we should have the big picture here. Absolutely. Uh, and the big picture is if if you're building a road or a bridge or you're introducing new software into a, a company to assist it with its financial management or whatever, it's all part of the exercise of, of making our community more efficient, uh, making the, the, the lifestyle and, and, and living conditions of people better, to solve a problem that's always been there and it's, no one's ever addressed it. If we feel as though we're participating in a bigger thing with meaning attached to it for everyone and not just for the particular project, I think people like to know that's what's happening. So I think anyone that's involved in a project needs to know, know the why question not just in a narrow sense, but in, in the broader sense as well. I mean, if, if creating a new form of prison uh, with new uh, ideas within it about how to rehabilitate prisoners 
um, works, we're all better off. Uh, and so I think the big picture is always important as part of the small picture. Mm -hmm. And um, the next question is, uh, how can project managers develop their political skills? Well, I think ultimately experience is really the only and best way to do it. Mm -hmm. First of all, that you can learn from other people. I mean, there's no doubt that there, there's that's that's important. If you've never been involved in a project before and you, you're taking on the the task, it might be useful to go and talk to other people who've got some experience in the matter, and and, and to talk to them about what some of the pitfalls are. And so, learning from others, I think, is important. But more importantly, is learning from yourself. Uh, inevitably, if you get into a management position. You probably, or it's not inevitable, but you've probably been involved in other projects. You can examine what happened in those projects and you can examine your own role in that. When I made a decision, how did the decision turn out? Did it turn out as I expected? If it didn't, what does that tell, tell me about my capacities, my strengths and my weaknesses? And so I think learning political skills must come from experience. Um, learning from others and then learning from yourself. It may be that you're very good at, uh, at the technical sides of the, of, of the task at hand, but you're not so good at the people management. And, and I think you need to know this. It may be that you have a very clear view of something, but you just can't communicate it. You just don't have that strength and power of communication. So I think everyone that's involved in, in project management should be continually evaluating their own performance uh, by comparing what they thought would happen, what they believed would happen, and what actually did happen, and then to learn from that about what their own strengths and weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think from that exercise, uh, you, you'll gain a lot of self-knowledge, I think, that would help you in your, in your future uh, as a project manager. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so self-reflection is a big part of that. So understanding, okay, what, where, where are my strengths, where are my weaknesses, where did I go wrong? from past experience and that's how we can develop this skills. I'm basically uh, an advocate for the uh, philosophy of Peter Drucker on that very question, mm -hmm. the great management theorist who died a number of years ago, who wrote enormous amount on, on management and his view was that in the end, you know, we have to manage ourselves and we have to learn from ourselves and we have to work out uh, what our strengths are and really work more and more on our strengths because it's easy to build your strengths and when we've got weaknesses, not so hard to. Uh, it's not so easy to overcome those when you're in middle. Uh, you you you're really in a career. It's very hard to turn that around. But what you can do is bring people in to help you who who can compensate for your own weaknesses. So I think self-reflection. It's not just good from a general psychological well-being point of view. If you're a manager, it's very important. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. A lot of managers don't know what their weaknesses are, and they still try to, well, you know, <laughs> compensate somehow. Well, they just <laughs> they just dig a, deep, a deeper ditch for themselves, yeah. you know, and they don't see it. Mm. Um, and we all we all have to know what our limits are. We all have to know what our strengths are and our weaknesses are. We all we all have to have a, a, an idea of our own personality, so that it doesn't overwhelm us, and. Uh, lead us to do things that we, we know are not effective but we just don't have the capacity to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, what is the role of ethics in politics? Well, in some ways, uh, politics by its very nature is ethical in the sense that it's the opposite of war. I mean, one way of solving a problem is to, to get out the guns and have a shootout and someone wins and someone loses. Mm -hmm. uh, not a very effective way to solve problems and more importantly, not a very ethical way to solve problems. So in the sense that politics is about learning to live with difference, to work out how to uh, uh, negotiate, how to compromise and how to build a society where we can all feel we're part of it, politics is a very ethical activity. Mm -hmm. Speaking about it more ma narrowly in terms of power and influence within an organisation, be it a government or, or an NGO or a church or a community organisation or a business, in that narrower sense, it can be either constructive and ethical, or it can be destructive and unethical. I mean, we all know what are the features of unethical behaviour uh, in the political arena. Uh, you know, being ruthless beyond the point that strength is necessary. 
I think, you know, people would argue, I think that's unethical. Uh, acting with deceit, perhaps in some very, very rare circumstances, such as a wartime situation, deceit can actually be ethical, and we know all of the, you know, the, the examples of that. But generally speaking, in, a, in the sort of democratic type society we live in, uh, it's it's not appropriate. Um, I think so. Being dishonest, being deceitful, uh, being brutal, all of those things can come with politics. But at the same, to achieve an end, you know, to, to get power and to exercise influence. Corruption's another one, of course. On the other hand, you can, to use that wonderful title of the book, you know, you can win friends and influence people without any of that destructive behaviour. It might just mean that you, you take an interest in, in, in your, your fellow uh, uh, workmates uh, and, and you try and find out what they're, what they're interested in or your stakeholder. You keep in touch with your stakeholders. You're transparent. You let people know what you're doing so they're confident that when you say something, you're not trying to conceal anything. Mm. Now, they're, they're all political behaviours designed to create influence, but they're very acceptable and, I believe, ethical. Third point I want to make, so, you know, the first point is I think politics to some extent is ethical. In the narrower definition of it, as the pursuit of interest, it can be constructive or destructive. Uh, I, I think in the, in the, when, when everything sort of comes together, we do need to be political because if we're not, bad people who are very political might win. And we might say, well, I'm not going to be political because it's, yeah, it's messy to, to spend that time trying to win someone over or, or, or to take an interest, you know. I, I, I don't want to do all of that. And, and so you don't have the influence that you need to back up a good cause. So I think the final point I would make then is, is I think uh, politics can be destructive or, or constructive, but don't let uh, the perception that you might have that it's all destructive to stop you engaging in it, because what that will mean is, good people. Uh, if good people aren't there, the bad people will win every time. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like politics is a tool. Now, if you have the right intentions and use it correctly, then you can, um, you know, win power and be able to influence. The right yeah, I mean, obviously, if we we believers in in, in a better society, we've got to achieve it, and uh, you you have to win people over to that cause. Uh, you you have to get power in order to change the laws of the country. That's politics. And, and, I, and I think all of that is absolutely necessary in, in, in supporting good things. And if everyone that, that believes in those good things chooses not to get involved in politics, well, I'm afraid the people who want bad things will win every time. Mm, absolutely. What else is missing today? Well, I think I'd like to make a distinction here between uh, leadership and management. And it's often made, of course, this distinction in the textbooks, but it's a good one. We can manage existing reality. We make sure that things are rolling along uh, effectively and, and efficiently. But we're pushing away from our consciousness some bigger issues that require harder decisions. The environment, global you know, issues related to the environment, such as climate change. The big structural issues that are occurring in the way people communicate with each other. Uh, we might in, try and ignore the fact that China and India and Brazil and these newly emerging countries are becoming more powerful and we don't quite know how to cope with it so we just sort of ignore it. Um, I, I think you can't run away from the big issues and the role of leaders is, is to take an organisation up another level. That means challenging vested interests and I guess if there's one thing missing today it's, you know, uh, enough leaders around business community, the community and, and the political system itself who will challenge some of those vested interests in order to make a better future for everyone, in order to make sure that the environment is not unsustainable for people in the future, uh, to make sure that a, a problem today isn't just left to fester to become a real crisis tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so I think if I, was say, if I was to say something is missing, it's not that we, we, we don't have uh, very competent people out there managing a range of projects in all sorts of areas of life. It's that it's, it's a little bit too easy not to go up to that next level 
question because that next level takes you into the risk arena. You might lose. Uh, much easier just to let things ride and you know retire gracefully. But if you challenge a vested interest, you've challenged a vested interest and, and you're in conflict. And, and I think leaders have to accept that there will be from time to time the necessity to go into conflict uh, in order to achieve a greater purpose. So I think what's missing today, I, uh, I'd say we need more leadership generally mm. alongside management. Mm. Now, <clears throat> leadership has been around in the um, in the area of business. You know, we talk about business leaders. We talk about even in, in law. Um, a lot of the politicians that arise are lawyers. Um, yeah. A lot of leaders come either from business or law. But when it comes to uh, more of the technical disciplines like engineering leaders, leaders in, uh, in, in the engineering field and project management, what could be uh, the advantage of having leaders emerge from the more technical disciplines? Or uh, how would that complement uh, leaders that come from a more of a business uh, background or a law background? Well, I think when we talk about leadership uh, in the community generally, uh, and let's let's go to the, the highest point there, which I think is politics. It has to be representative. It has to be inclusive. Now, what do I mean by that? If you've got a group of people sitting around in a cabinet and that they, they all think the same way, they all have the same backgrounds, uh, you're going to miss something. Mm. It, you know, and that's why... Increasing the role of, of women, for example, has been very important for business creativity, mm. to get a different perspective. That's why having people of uh, non-English speaking backgrounds in, 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 into our boards and our governments is important. Now, the same thing applies, I think, for, for professional and technical backgrounds. Um, we all have a different sort of knowledge base. Uh, doctors think a particular way. Patient presents. They do their diagnosis, they use the best knowledge available on what medications and treatments are available to try and solve the problem. Uh, lawyers, on the other hand, are looking for flaws in the argument. Um, engineers are very much like doctors in a way, they're scientists background, they want to solve problems, they want you know, the, the building to stay up, uh, they want the, the road to last a long time, you know, they're more technical. I think a range of professional skills are needed in politics. If too many lawyers, too many people who are just involved in politics, I think they have too narrow a, a view. So I agree with you. I think we need to have a broad base uh, within decision-making processes uh, to, to just provide a check and a balance. Groupthink is dangerous, mm -hmm. and uh, groupthink arises from social um, exclusion. Uh, all the men sticking together, you know, uh, all one tribe sticking together and ignoring all the others, you know. All one group saying, well, we've got the truth and, you know, only doctors know how to solve a problem or only engineers do or only lawyers do or only political pollsters do. You know, I think we do need that mix. It's all part of the check and balance that's needed to get a good outcome. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, diversity's, diversity plays a huge role. So bringing more women, for instance, into engineering fields uh, because it is a male dominant uh, discipline uh, and bringing more leaders out of technical fields and that complement leaders from more of the... Um, well, I, well I, let, let, let's, let's go back a step. Mm. What is it that we believe is the strength of our political, social tradition? 18th century enlightenment. You know, the belief that, that human rights are important the belief that we should have freedom of expression and thought. What's being said here? What's being said here is we need people to be critical, to be able to go beyond the existing reality and to project to a better reality. Mm. But that's only going to happen if there's a right of others to challenge and to try and win, win over people to a different point of view. It's no different in an organisation. You, you need challenge within. Now, obviously, that was in within limits. I mean, obviously, if, if, if the challenge within an organisation is of the sort, it's either you or me, and it's a revolutionary-type struggle over who's going to lead the organisation, in the short term, that's going to probably be negative. 
but overall you do need to have different points of view. It's, it's, it's the nature of our society to say that there's not one truth. Uh, and so I think it's not, this is not just an issue about effective organisations, it's an issue about what we believe in as a community, which is that there isn't one truth, uh, there are lots of little ones that we gather along the way, but we never get a big, big, big one, mm. because as soon as we've got the biggest and the biggest and the biggest truth of all, and, and no one else has that, we're in danger of becoming quite intolerant, and, and I think uh, progress is replaced by reaction. Mm, absolutely. Um, there's a there's a famous quote by Warren Bennis and later Peter Drucker also um, quotes this. Um, Management is about doing things right. Leadership is about doing the right things. Well, you know, there's an ethical element in all of this, as I, I was saying earlier when we were talking about uh, you know politics. Um, we 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 hopefully doing all the things that we're doing because they contribute to a better society for everyone. And as I said, uh, I think when people know that that's what they're doing and they're building a bridge because it's going to uh, improve the well-being of significant numbers of people, uh, that's just better than the notion that it's a technical exercise to you know, link one side of a river to another. Mm. Uh, I think I'm me meaning matters to people and I think project managers that can project the big picture are going to get better teamwork than those that just keep it low-key, you know, technical exercise. Fantastic. So any final words to our students of project management and engineering? It's not a technical exercise. It involves politics. It involves you and your personality, your strengths and, and your weaknesses. And of course, it has ethical dimensions. So I think we need to go beyond the technical treatment of a project to consider you know, those political issues, those personality issues and those ethical issues. Fantastic. Well, thank you very thank much you. again. Great, thanks, Esther. <laughs>